So, I made this to kind of summarize the whole thing for you guys. We work from the bottom up, okay? Inside out. Inside out. No. Now, first thing is we need, if we, if we want to make our skin lighter, okay? This is what we're talking about first. First of all, we need to reduce these melanocytes. The less melanocytes, the less of everything. So when we talk about transforming growth factor and alpha MSH and those ingredients, those are the ones that turn this synthesis of these melanocytes, they bring it down. Then we're talking about the formation of the bubbles inside here. The less bubbles we have in there, the more we control or the more we control the transfer of these bubbles to the cells, we don't put any gas in those trucks, then they can't deliver the bread, okay? And then we cannot have any bread, they have no color. So step number two is the formation of melasma. Then inside those bubbles, we can also control how much melanin is being synthesized. And that's where the tyrosinase and all these, like vitamin C is a tyrosinase inhibitor. That's, uh, that's one of the mechanisms. So if your problem is not the synthesis here, but the problem is too much transfer, guess what? The tyrosinase control is not gonna help you much. If you have too many melanocytes, controlling that tyrosinase is not gonna help you out. You have to go further down. Now, we talked about the, then we talk about the deposition of it. So these melanosomes needs to transfer the melanin into the cell. There are steps that we can control that, right? And then we are talking about, oh, did I write that twice? I write that twice, sorry. And then the last, the last uh, part is actually the, when these melanins accumulate on the top, Manuela, you take it away. What do we do? We want to do exfoliation. exfoliation. So it all depends. So sometimes you're going to have superficial um, issues on the skin that is hyperpigmentation superficial. Sometimes it's a bit of a trauma from an acne scar right. or a little bit of sun damage. Then, so, then other times it's much more deep seated, like a right. melasma, right? And so this way, it each one requires a different active to deal with it, right? So it's not just cell turnover. That's why when you have hyperpigmentation and people say, well, just, I'm just gonna get a peel. Well, you can peel all day long, but if this is still acting up, and sometimes peeling it excites it even more because now it gets stressed out and it gets a different information into that uh, melanocyte. So that it, it gets different, excited. So it says, remember, this job is to protect you. It's right. all it's ever trying to do is to create a shield or dim the UV exposure. But if you give it mixed messages or you overdo it, sometimes you destroy it, you weaken its ability, or sometimes you strengthen its ability depending on what you're doing. That's why it's important to understand the mechanism and understand what ingredients are addressing which layer or which pathway. Let me give you a simple example. If you go on a nice vacation and you go away for two weeks and you get a nice tan, your skin gets darker, okay? If you use exfoliation, Gone. you're gonna lose Up that here. tan a lot faster, but it doesn't affect the pigmentation that much because that's at a deeper layer. Mm -hmm. So if you have eight spots, don't think that just using alpha hydroxy acid is going to help. It that's may make it a little bit lighter, right. but it's not going to do a great job. Because it doesn't affect the, the, the deeper layer. Or deeper those, all those activities, all these activities that I wrote down here, the alpha uh, um, hydroxy acids, they don't uh, work on it, or even the beta hydroxy acids. So this is really the whole story of pigmentation. Now. This is something that um, uh, I'm gonna end the discussion here in terms of talking about it, but next week I've made a little chart here, which really is 100 of what I could just bring. This can go on for pages. Basically, I have put the mechanisms right across. Just as an example, we're gonna get into the details of this a little bit more next time. Next and then week. I've put ingredients. And then wherever it's read, that's where that ingredient or that natural extract 
actually works on right. which mechanism. So is it the tyrosine is even is it, if it is it inhibiting the the amino acid tyrosine itself? Is it going on TRP1, TRP2, MITF, alpha MSH, and and the list goes on. So when our job as a, a formulation chemist and biochemist is that when we design a product, we want to make sure that we go universal. Mm -hmm. The reason that we go universal is that we pick on all those mechanisms and we select so we can do a better coverage. So it takes the guessing game out because you, an individual cannot be 100% sure. I can, we don't have a probe in the science of skin care that we can put on the skin and say, oh, your problem for pigmentation is this mechanism. And or only this all mechanism. All your problem is only this. We don't have that, unfortunately, not yet. Maybe one day we will have a probe that can actually, from the, from the information it gets from the skin, it can tell you this mechanism is the problem. But we don't have that um, at our disposal right now. So it's important that we cover all those areas yeah. so that when a person uses the product, the, the chance of having a success is going to dramatically improve and you don't have to guess or get disappointed that, yeah, well, I used this brightening product and it didn't work. And then ultimately, too, when you're making a formulation, the idea is success in getting the problem solved without destroying mm. the future ability of your skin to function normally or properly or in your best interest. And a lot of times there are ingredients that are very effective. They get the job done in the short term and then change the future of your skin in a not so great way. Right. And this is why you see some people end up with, you know, pop okay. spots. No, let me uh, give, there are some ingredients that act on the melanosomes and melanocytes, mostly melanocytes, and they destroy them. If the destruction of the melanocytes, there's some, an ingredient I give you, one example I give you is an ingredient called monobenzone, okay? Monobenzone, you if don't want to use it. You don't want to use it, <laughs> uh, unless it's prescribed by a doctor, and I tell you why a doctor may prescribe it. Uh, Monobenzone will go into the skin and permanently destroy the genetic coding for creating more melanocytes. So when the monobenzone goes on the skin, it destroys permanently, permanently, these pigments, okay? So your skin will completely be of no color, colorless, okay? Like a vitiligo skin, okay? Now, that sometimes has its own place because there are people that have vitiligo and they don't like it. Some people are completely, it's a personal thing, okay? Some people may not like it. And they may decide that, okay, I, I have no hope to bring the color back in this area and this patchiness really bothers me. I'd rather be completely no color. Yeah. So that is when they may decide to go and use monobenzone. Should be on the 100% control of a good dermatologist. And if you ever go, try to go that route, I am sure your dermatologist will advise you that your skin has no sun protection anymore. And you must, 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 by all means, use an amazing sunscreen and protection on your skin. Because mm -hmm. your skin will be much more vulnerable.